So let's get started, everyone. Uh, it's something that we've tried here at Channel Television to bring you up to speed about the happenings as regarding the NDDC. Tonight, we're back on that matter of the Niger Delta Development Commission NDDC and the huge allegations and counter-allegations that have come up time and time again. At least in the last uh, few days, it's become a major talking point in the country. Today, the Senate is calling for the dissolution of the Interim Management Committee, IMC, of the Niger Delta Development Commission and ask President Buhari to reconstitute the commission. The Senate made this call after considering a report from his ad hoc committee which investigated financial, alleged financial recklessness in the NDC to the tune of 40 billion naira. Presents his report before the Senate which details the inefficiencies and corruption in the NDC. The NDDC, according to the report, spent 1.3 trillion naira between October 2015 and May 31st, 2019, with some of these spendings outside budgetary provision. That happened on the floor of the Senate. In the Green Chamber, issues around NDDC also came up. At today's plenary, the Speaker, Mr. Femi Bajabi Amela, directed the Clerk of the House to issue a criminal complaint of perjury and civil defamation suit against Mr. Akbabio. Take a listen to him. Instruct them to initiate a criminal complaint of perjury against the minister. <laughs> At the same time, we will instruct counsel to explore the possibility of a civil defamation suit against the minister. The Minister of the Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Goswe Akwabi, has replied to lawmakers within the 48 hours ultimatum that he was given and has denied saying that the lawmakers in the 9th Assembly benefited from contracts awarded by the Niger Delta Development Commission. The Speaker of Mbaja Jabi Amila, who announced the receipt of Senator Akwabi's response, said the Minister claimed to have referred to old contracts awarded by the NDDC which had not been paid for and some of which are part of the constituency project of the lawmakers. Hmm. Some issues are already coming up. Mr. Bajabia Miller said the minister's response would be referred to the Committee on Ethics and Privileges to look at the merits of his arguments. Tonight, let's give you a sense and a benefit of insight of how this has happened or what has happened or what the NDDC stands for and how this has gone over the years and where things have gone wrong. Tonight, I have a former Minister of Information, uh, former Minister of uh, uh, Information under the Olusha Basanjo administration, Mr. Frank Nweke Jr., joins us from our Abuja studio. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Nweke, for joining us tonight. It's good to see you. And at some point, uh, the NDDC, you superintend the NDDC. And the big question a lot of people will be asking, the billions and billions of Naira that has been spent in the NDDC. That agency was set up to fix the poverty issue in the, in the NDDC, to fix the development issue in the NDDC, but it doesn't look like it has happened. What went wrong, Mr. Nwiki? Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Shane. It's good to see you. Um, but I'm just going to uh, make a slight, uh, make a caveat. Of course, you, you agree with me that uh, my being here tonight uh, borders on uh, ambush. <laughs> okay, this is not part of my plan when I set out uh, to work this morning. Uh, but of course, uh, I received this uh, call and then this passionate request, and I said, well, I'll come in here. So part of what I'm going to be sharing is essentially residual, residual knowledge from my time um, uh, when I had them under my, when I had the NDC under my uh, supervision as Minister for Intergovernmental Affairs and Special Duties. And uh, you did, in your preface a minute ago, you did state clearly that um, the establishment of the NDDC was a deliberate and conscious effort on the part of the government of President Obasanjo to really um, remedy the injustice and the infrastructure deficit, development deficit in the Niger Delta um, at the time. And um, this, was the, this was what informed the establishment of the NDDC. And um, this was also what informed the, um, I think, the increase of the derivation uh, fund uh, from about 3% at the time uh, to uh, about 13%. Uh, this was a very, um, that was a statement by President Abbasian at, at the time that he recognized that there were valid issues on uh, development in the area. There were valid issues on the environment in the area and for which reason he did this. Um, 
Um, but, you know, like you and like most Nigerians, uh, I've watched with consternation and great uh, embarrassment uh, the, um, the drama in the National Assembly, the accusations and counter accusations by uh, high officials of government. Um, and it's just completely um, disgraceful. Uh, so the, the big question is, at some point we hear that the NDDC, of course, under your ministry at the time, was uh, supervised by you. Uh, it's supposed to be supervised under the presidency at some point, under the SGF. Uh, now is under the ministry of the Niger Delta. How these monies were being stolen, allegedly, and how this contract became scandalous and as a scam, uh, comes to the mind of Nigerians of the workings of government. Where did it things go wrong? Has it been like this? Have money been stolen from the onset like this? Okay, well, uh, Sharon, I must uh, state clearly and with every sense of modesty that the administration in which I served under the leadership of President Obasanjo, I want to assure you that no one, no high official of government could have contemplated the kind of impunity that we've heard, you know, openly owned up to, accepted, um, you know, really uh, uh, um, uh, explicitly uh, uh, stated in, at various fora in the, in the, in the ongoing uh, um, uh, probe. You couldn't even contemplate it. In any case, let us look at the mechanisms that were in the law establishing the NDDC, okay? Um, first of all, there is, uh, don't, don't forget that a key component of what uh, President Obasanjo uh, of, of his agenda at the time was what was called the, the Due Process um, uh, Office. The Due Process Office was established really to give Nigeria's value for money. The Due Process Office was established at the time to ensure that the award of contract was done with some transparency and some integrity. And so this was under, if you remember, I think um, uh, 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 Mrs. Uh, Obi Ezekwesili, um, who went on to um, serve also as Minister for Solid Minerals and then subsequently Minister for um, Education before she eventually left for the World Bank. And this was done with a high level of professionalism and I think the results were there for Nigerian citizens to see. And at that time, it was believed that uh, Nigeria had turned the corner at the time. And of course, even though this was done at the federal level, but parastatals, agencies of government, were mandated. They were, it was demanded of every agency of government to really embrace the due process uh, 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 initiative. And as minister in charge of uh, the Niger Delta at the time, in the NDDC, you know, as, my, as minister for intergovernmental affairs, of course, we had to insist that their operations uh, were consistent with the due process uh, uh, initiative or the agenda of the Obasanjo administ ad ad administration. And I must uh, uh, recollect at this time that um, there were an issue, there was some form of resistance uh, at the time. And you know, there, there was a blowout between myself and uh, I think Chairman uh, Oyemu Gachuku at the time and uh, his management team, there was a blowout. And of course the president sided with me and they had to comply at the time. But more importantly, let me proceed to say that under that law, there's also something called the Presidential Monitoring Committee. And this Presidential Monitoring Committee was made, of, you know, made up of Nigerians of, you know, from diverse walks of life uh, who had the, uh, both the professional uh, training and capacity to really um, you know, check things out, review what was being submitted, review the works that were being done, and then provide a quarterly report to the President of the Federal Republic. Now, under that same act, okay, the NDDC management were also required to actually submit quarterly reports to the minister, the supervising minister. So what I'm saying is that I received quarterly reports on the basis of which uh, uh, issue, you know, matter, uh, queries were issued where, where necessary or uh, advice was provided where necessary as a way of also keeping the president informed that uh, you know, things were functioning well there. So the question is, where is the presidential monitoring committee in all of this over the last uh, 12 years? I mean, I've been out of government for about 12 years now. Where's the presidential monitor, you know, uh, you know, you know, uh, monitoring committee? Have they been doing their work? Okay. So the various ministers of uh, supervising ministers, have they been receiving quarterly reports? So if they have been receiving quarterly reports, why has it taken this length of time for these issues to um, uh, aggregate or accumulate to the kind of scandalous proportions that it has now assumed? And we, you know, it's just incredible. And then, 
only for these things to blow open in the face of government. All so right. where are all these mechanisms, okay? okay. Where yeah. are the auditors? M M where, where are the auditors? So we're looking at critically uh, some issues that have been raised tonight, uh, earlier today at the National Assembly. First and foremost, going forward, uh, there is a suggestion or there is a report by the Senate that the IMC should be dissolved. What do you think about that? I, 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 first of all, Shen, check. Um, you can, you can, if, if you have, if you've never seen a copy of the NDDC Act, please, I need for you to try and get it after this interview. But I want to state categorically that the, there is absolutely no provision in that Act for the establishment of an interim management committee. And therefore, that move by government or for the administration to even uh, to, to have um, allowed the establishment of uh, the IMC is totally illegal, okay? And I think that I recall very uh, clearly that um, um, even with the, even, even the, um, when the Senate screened um, uh, some uh, members, um, some, some, some appointees by, uh, but nominees by government, by the President Buhari, I think uh, about a year ago or thereabout, and then um, it was after that screening, okay? It was incredible to me, like um, it was to a lot of other people, that the president of the country would nominate people for screening or for appointment. These people were screened expeditiously by the Senate of the Federal Republic. And then they were just simply, the, 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 um, and, the, and the report was sent to the, to, uh, to, the, to the president. And then a minister then sort of seems to override the president's uh, uh, nominations and then decides to institute an interim management committee. So for me, it's, it's illegal and should not be allowed to stand. And you can see that revelations coming out, you know, in the course of the hearings by the National Assembly on the scores, you know, the, the, both the illegality and then even the, the, um, the, the um, what should I call it now, the, 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 the confusion that has been orchestrated by this interim management committee. And so I, I really think it's important that we go back to the path of uh, law and order, that we, we respect um, uh, the laws of our country. If an act of parliament is already in place and then you know you don't have government undermining the laws of the country doesn't say so much for the administration it doesn't say so much for 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 government so going forward uh because we've heard humongous amount of money there are being uh, uh i mean the allegations about monies that have been misappropriated and the fact that there are allegations coming from exec members of the executive against lawmakers and lawmakers are also accusing members of the executives, it does look like some kind of racketeering. Where do we go from here? You advise the government. <laughs> well, it, it is important to my mind that, um, that uh, the, the president reestablishes his uh, authority over government. This is critical. This is extremely critical. And so a situation where you have uh, members of your cabinet at each other's throat, or you have in agencies of government undermining each other without uh, much being heard from the presidential villa, it's not, um, it doesn't speak well for the administration. It doesn't speak well for the party in power. It does not speak well for Nigeria as a country. And so to your very specific question, the president must take charge. The, the, there, must be, um, there, there must be some intervention um, to call the, 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 the various uh, uh, institutions of government to order. It, it's, it's really important. We cannot allow this, this situation to prevail. Leave even the parties out of it, okay? Leave the ministers out of it. We're talking about the country. The entire world is watching. The entire world is listening to this, to this scandal that is going on. And unfortunately, this is not the only one at this time. So whichever way you look at it, Hush Puppy is being arrested. Then the EFCC chairman is being arrested. Then now it's the NDDC. Only God knows what else is going to come out. And so the president, the administration must step up for the sake of the country for the sake of his, um, of his own government, must step up to really uh, call everyone to order, okay? It is important to my mind that at this point, I mean, if I, if I had my way, the, the entire uh, management at the NDDC must be asked to step aside. If I had my way, I think that the minister of the Niger Delta should step aside, you know, and then I, the president must institute an independent inquiry to really uh, get to the bottom of what is happening and then, and then encourage and then subsequently right. ensure that the, the act establishing the NDDC is respected. Okay. And that, you know, it is implemented. The various organs, the, you know, various uh, uh, regulatory organs 
the various uh, uh, reporting lines and things must be respected. The president himself ought to receive these reports uh, uh, quarterly from the minister of the Niger Delta. This was what I did with President Abbasanjo when I had supervisory uh, functions over the NDDC. All right. And, um, and, and you know, so, and for which reason, uh, with every sense of modesty, we, we didn't uh, witness the kind of um, drama and uh, maladministration that uh, has occupied national headlines in the last uh, couple of uh, days and weeks. Mr. Frank Nweke Jr., a former Minister of Information and Intergovernmental Affairs and Special Duties under the uh, Obasanjo administration, thank you indeed for your time tonight and sharing your experience with us.